The 2022 NBA Media Day brought us tons of content. Perhaps the thing people are most excited about, though, is Zion Williamson and the new look Pelicans. The last time we saw him playing, he was putting up video game numbers as a 20-year-old in one of the most dominant seasons from a sophomore player we've ever seen. But just how does he do it? As an athlete, Zion is truly one of one. At 6'6", he came into the league listed at over 280 pounds with a huge frame that makes him one of the strongest, most powerful players in all of basketball. Yet still, he has a level of explosiveness and control that you can't find almost anywhere. He can blast off the floor for a 45-inch vertical where he has shockingly good balance and high-flying acrobatics, and even on the ground, he controls his momentum exceptionally well when accelerating or changing directions. This unprecedented combination of mass, explosiveness, and body control makes him one of the most physically imposing forces we've ever seen, and plays a huge part in his ability to get to and score in the paint at will. He pairs those athletic tools with a pretty strong handle that allows him to start his attack from the perimeter. Because he's comfortable slashing in either direction, he's able to catch defenders off guard by throwing crossovers out in front of him with quick bursts of speed, or if he feels they'll bite on that, will instead go to an in and out dribble and explode into space the other way. It's his first step that makes these moves so effective. He can get near his top speed in just one or two dribbles, and gets really low to the ground like an elite downhill guard to duck into traffic. Even if his man is able to stay in front of him off the initial charge, they still have to deal with that power, just bullying his way to the basket like a wrecking ball. This makes him a matchup nightmare. Anyone who's strong enough to not get moved at will likely isn't quick enough laterally to stay in front of him, and anyone agile enough to cut off his drives is probably getting tossed around without much difficulty. If defending him individually wasn't hard enough, Later into the 2021 season, New Orleans started using him a lot more as a ball handler in the pick and roll, where he now had the help of a screener to carve out even more room. These aren't your typical modern day spread pick and rolls, where they're spacing the floor for Zion to come off a screen near the top of the key, but rather sudden actions that occur right outside the paint and create just a small enough opening for him to take off. He again uses those quick, explosive changes of direction and crossovers to force his defender into playing on one side or the other, and any space between him and that second defender just serves as a launch pad for gliding to the cup. Now, we've seen some players who cause these downhill issues, and where he differentiates himself is through his ability to also generate these looks out of the post. This is where he looks like a Shaq 2.0, sealing off position for easy entry passes, and almost always attacking right off the catch with ferocious spins, drop steps, and even an occasional hook shot. He covers tons of ground with every move he makes, and again is just so physically overwhelming that playing him straight up is almost never a viable option. As we've seen, he's already one of the league's best self-creators, and his ability to also play off the ball adds so much more versatility. He has a ton of utility as the big in a pick and roll. He's good at landing screens and positioning himself for easy deliveries when rolling, where that downhill momentum allows him to finish right off the catch, put the ball on the floor and quickly find an attack angle, or throw down any lob within range of the basket. The same applies to when he's just simply cutting, knowing when and where to dive for easy passing angles that lead to efficient shots, and when posting up, you'll often see him go to the spin move for backdoor lobs over the top. Not all of his off-ball value comes from these explosive, quick actions that catch defenses off guard though. He also has amazing feel for where to position himself and when to move. He commonly floats towards the middle of the floor whenever space near the nail starts opening up, and in the dunker spot, he's always moving to different spots across the baseline to offer an easier target for dump-offs or lobs. That awareness, along with his vertical pop, also help him be extremely effective on the offensive glass, where he almost always turns second chance opportunities into points due to his all-time great finishing. I've talked about all the ways in which he's able to create offense in the paint, but the real damage is done with how well he converts once he's there. That explosive leaping ability allows him to get above the rim at will, and while he can bring the hammer down with power, he also has shockingly soft touch. 
touch. He can feather in layups with craft at virtually every angle you can think of. He's comfortable moving the ball to avoid shot blockers while in the air, and he of course does it even when there's tons of contact. His massive frame serves as a shield when jumping into rim protection, and the height he's able to get on his release with those soft touch finishes allow him to maneuver through the trees. Scoring at this level in the most efficient spot on the floor is any defense's worst nightmare, and as a result, they often elect to just send him to the line instead. He's not by any means a great free throw shooter, but in 2021, he made just under 70%, and at 9 attempts a game, that's contributing to some pretty productive offense. So what defenses are left with in most cases as the best option is just throwing as many defenders as it takes to slow down his attack. And because he has so much versatility in how he gets deep into the paint and finishes once he's there, he's able to just force a collapse seemingly at will. This sort of paint gravity puts him in a pretty rare territory when talking about breaking down the defense and generating wide open opportunities for others all over the court, which is why so much of his future offensive outlook and the height of his ceiling rides on his development as a playmaker. To me, there are three major boxes to check when capitalizing on the threat of this level of scoring, and Zion already marks off two of them to some degree. The first is of course a willingness to find the open man which he's already shown no problem doing. When he feels extra help or a double coming, he doesn't hesitate to make the right pass. Sure, he'll sometimes launch himself into extremely tough shots down low, but I would say that has more to do with his lack of vision. This is the one area that I feel there's a pretty noticeable deficiency. As he started to initiate more offense from the perimeter and in the pick and roll, he definitely started to see the floor more, but there's a lot left to be desired. He's very reactive with his reads, meaning he has to physically see helping defenders start to rotate before making a pass, whereas you would want some level of anticipation that allows for higher value finds and makes him a bit less predictable. His timing also isn't always the best, maybe seeing a potentially open teammate once that window has gotten smaller or even closed entirely. Although in flashes, he does make some cross-court reads and tight laydowns on the interior that really make you think of what he could develop into, and that's because his delivery and overall touch are already pretty polished. He does really favor his left hand, making passes to the right side which has its limitations, but the velocity at which he gets the ball to different spots on the floor from a live dribble is truly impressive. It's important to also note that he doesn't need to be some wizard level court mapper and floor general to punish defenses. Just sharp passing and strong decision making to go along with that unrelenting scoring pressure would be enough to make him one of the very best offensive players in the NBA. If we take a look at how his overall game as a slasher performs in various metrics, he pretty much breaks them. He not only creates more shots at the rim than anyone, but finishes on those opportunities at the highest level with the very worst shot quality. Also note that New Orleans has done a great job at improving the spacing within their offense since the last time we've seen him, so this could be a case where we might start seeing some off the chart type stuff. It's just that downhill playmaking that has clear room for improvement, and if that number starts to rise, I feel sorry for NBA defenses. Well, more sorry than I already do, because Zion's return could be the driving force needed to propel this Pelicans team to absurd offensive production. We're talking about plugging the NBA's premier interior force into a unit that had a 118.1 offensive rating in 26 games with CJ McCollum, which was good for 5th in the NBA over that stretch. Both CJ and Ingram have the off-ball shot making and spacing necessary to fully unleash the beast, while Zion's off-ball game is actually adding to their ability to create quality offense from the perimeter. The result is this three-headed monster with tons of solid role players around them that might just be impossible to stop from scoring. How good this team actually performs will have a lot to do with their defense, which I'm not going to get into this time, but to conclude, Zion Williamson's ability to get to the rim and finish at an unprecedented level made him one of the NBA's very best scorers at just age 20. He's had a year off from one of the most dominant sophomore clinics we've ever seen, has clearly shed some of the weight that could be contributing to his health concerns, and New Orleans has surrounded him with some strong, young talent which is why defenses across the league should be terrified.
If you enjoyed this breakdown, make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and turn my post notifications on to be first on more content. If you're interested in my more in-depth research, make sure to check out my website, podcast, and social media profiles. You can find those links in the description. Feel free to let me know down in the comments what you think of Zion Williamson and just how good you believe the Pelicans are. As always, I hope you all have a great day, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.